Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, we were having a nice little pleasant evening with Vool. We were eating, drinking, having a good time. So let's just jump right back into that and see where that evening takes us, shall we? Anyway guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right in. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Alright, I'm about to offer to refill it for him when he stands up and walks towards the barrel himself. I still wonder if having you out and about is a good idea. Even in my shop, the wolves are taking active interest in you. Well, that's what Rannick wanted, for me to stop being a secret. I mutter, watching him dunk the tankard. The longer I'm kept hidden, the more exotic and fascinating I become. He shoved me into the butchery and I blended in with the wards. The wolf scoffs through a smile as he takes his seat again. I suppose you're right. Size-wise, you do fit well with the bunnies. He teases and I roll my eyes. Ha ha. But seriously, we need to get you buffed up. His tone shifts a little. If those females had their way, you'd forever remain a flowery twig. I think they're just caring. I am rather fragile. I admit, looking at my slender body. There's not an ounce of fat underneath my skin, but also very little muscle. It's almost like I maintained the most healthy but inactive life before waking up here. Very fragile. You can say that again. He smirks in agreement. Hmm. I mumble, picking on my pie. Maybe some working out wouldn't be that bad. My memory might be failing me, but I don't think I used to be this frail. Speaking of females, I do think you need to give them some slack. Versa is looking out for me as for, as for Cora. I ponder for a moment. Well, she seems nice. I wasn't quite sure about her before, but now... She's already spoken for. He throws in randomly, as if to quash any notions in my mind. By Rannick? I retort mockingly, remembering the comment Verissa made. Why is it funny? <laughs> no reason. I shrug. The two of them have been making googly eyes for one another since we were teens. They're obviously into each other. I flash my brows challengingly. They're not the only ones. My voice takes on a teasing tone. What's that supposed to mean? <clears throat> I notice you sneaking longing gazes at Verissa. The wolf's eyes open wide as he's stunned by my forwardness. It's time he tasted his own medicine. She is quite beautiful, I say as if agreeing with his unspoken assessment. I'm not having this conversation with you, piglet. Vul subdues a growl, but I brush it off with a chuckle. Why not? I think you should... I don't care what you think. Precisely, I agree, throwing off his train of thought and causing the male to blink. I need to reason with him. We didn't spend the entire day working together to not even be able to have an honest conversation. The only other person you could talk to with is Rannick, and you're too worried about his opinion to risk making a fool of yourself. With me, you can talk freely. Ugh! You start to sound like fucking Tano. He sneers, taking a thirsty gulp from his mug. You mean I'm being perceptive? I mean you're being annoying. And I mean you're being an annoying little prick who sticks his nose in other people's business. His mug clanks against the table as he gives me a rather aggravated gaze. Come on, Vool. We both know you have a crush on her. I think you two could make it work. I see he's struggling to contain a growl, but if I don't try to push, we'll never open a proper rapport. You're both duty-bound, honorable, and extremely work-oriented. You just need to drop the bad boy act and open up to her a little. What act? He snarls softly, giving me a clear warning. You think I was acting when I put your lights out? Uh... I sigh in resignation. There's no talking to him, is there? I wonder how Rannick deals with this. My wolf is extremely patient, though. Perhaps that's the key? I decide not to draw this out longer than it needs to be and just get to the point. Listen, I've spent some time with Verissa, and I think I had enough one-on-ones with her to know what she needs. She's just desperate for some human touch. Oh. Okay, why did you word it like that? That's not good. The scrape of wood echoes across the room as the wolf stands up and slams his paws into the table, giving me a murderous gaze. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Damn. I don't even get to blink when the table flies across the room and his paws connect to my throat, shoving me back against the wall. My feet wriggle in panic as the floor disappears from beneath and I'm suspended from his hold. If you so much as touched her... What? No! I realize my mistake a second too late. Slip of the tongue! Vool! I cry out desperately as he squeezes my throat tighter. I can hear my heart pounding in my head as I'm getting starved for air. Please! It's just an expression! 
Mine begins to slip away, but his rattle, but his rattled breath slows down, and he finally lets go of me. I slip out of his paws and drop to the floor like a rag doll, and the pounding in my head subsides. Fuck, Vol! What the hell? I gasp, rubbing my abused neck, which is aching once again on the count of the black wolf. You really need to work on your word choices. The male tries to scoff indifferently, but I can see his mortified expression. And you, on your fucking temper. He locks his gaze with his paws, looking at them as if they were covered in blood. I'm so confused, I checked my own neck to ensure he didn't do any permanent harm. There's no blood, just a bruise. Eventually, he simply shakes his head and clutches his fists. I don't need this shit! He growls and rushes out of the house. Vul, wait! Get back here! I try to call out, but he slams the door behind him. I just sit there on the floor, gazing over the trashed room in utter defeat. What the hell? Yeah, Vul's fucking stubborn as a hell. It takes me a while to set back, set back the table and clean the kitchen. The pie flew everywhere, and it was a nightmare getting it out of all the nooks and crannies. My throat still hurts, but I'm not sure what I'm more annoyed with. The fact that he attacked me, or that he left me to clean up his mess? I guess the only comfort is I had the dandelion in my pen. Had it been on the table, I doubt it would have survived the, I doubt it would have survived the fight. The fight or the flight? The flight, okay. I touch the flower, trying to get my mood lifted, but to little effect. I'm worried about Rannick being all alone out there, and Vithyr's pre preparation for other packs being sent after him does not fill me with confidence. Moreover, I doubt I'd be working with Vul tomorrow. Not sure if I'd even want to, but the wolf won't be showing his muzzle around me anytime soon, that's for certain. Which means I'll be left alone to my own devices. Should have listened to Verissa. Even Rannick thought this was a bad idea. Aside from being angry that the wolf effectively broke his promise, what's even more disappointing is that he even failed to do what he wanted to do. To prove he's not a mindless brute. Good going, champ. I feel extremely frustrated. I had so much faith in him. I guess he's a dumb beast after all. Once everything is set back to where it was, I hang up Rannick's cloak and refill a cup of some water to place it in my to place my dandelion in. I pet the head of the flower and look around the room. I'm not really hungry anymore, nor am I in the mood to do anything else. The overwhelming feeling of defeat and exhaustion takes hold and I just want to go to sleep. I put out the fire and the lights and simply head to bed. The mattress flops as I land on it, and my eyes close automatically. This really was a long fucking day. I'm exhausted and fed up. Not at all how I wanted this to end. Thankfully, the darkness claims me within moments. Hmm. A gentle hum tries to stir me during my sleep. Perhaps to pull me deeper into that odd place where one, is, where one both is and isn't. Or maybe back in the land of the living for another stroll. Whatever the reason, I'm too tired to comply. My mind slips away from me and fades out into blissful nothingness. No voice can haunt me tonight. Not tonight. Hmm. I wake up on my own with a drawn-out yawn. I slept without a single disturbance all the way into daylight, as made obvious by the sun saturating the room. Despite having a good night's rest, my arms are sore from all the swinging I did the previous day. My mood is in no great shape, either. I still feel rather bitter about how it all ended. As expected, Vul has not come to fetch me. I can only assume he's working alone and fuming, most likely blaming me for what happened. Might be for the best. It's not like I want to see him anytime soon. Slipping up on the vernacular is one thing. Oh. But I'm not about to ignore the fact that he nearly choked, chalked me out, and choked me out again. I get out of the bed and walk straight into the kitchen. The air is much warmer today. The weather really is going in circles. I take a long, lazy stretch as I pass the table and approach the cupboard. The water is stale and dirty. Rannick was doing so much prep before I woke up. I begin to appreciate everything he did to accommodate me. With an uncomfortable sigh, I take a look towards the bucket. There's no water left. Come to think of it, I don't have any food either. I pick up the remaining two rolls from a few days ago. I tap them against the hearth, hearing an empty knock. Yep, rock hard. Maybe good for making toast, but not much else. Vul really left me stranded. I feel anger growing inside me. Such fucking childish behavior. No, not even childish. Kids don't bash their brains out. He's a monster. He certainly acts like one, that's for sure. But, ugh! I don't want to waste time on this right now. I don't... I don't need to get... I don't need getting angry... I don't need to be getting angry at the rabid wolf. What I need is food and water, and the only way to get that is either by going... Is either by going to Verissa... I don't know where the female lives, but surely someone will point me to her. I'm a foreigner, not a mute. If I just say her name, I'll get directions without blowing her cover. 
I take up the cloak from the hanger and go for my dandelion. It looks just as fresh as the day Rannick gave it to me. I'm about to pick it up when I think about Vool's attack. On an off chance he's going to wolf handle me again, I'd rather the flower remain safe here. Gently, I pat it as if saying goodbye, grab the bucket, and step outside. The day is extremely bright and warm without a single cloud in the sky. It's quite lovely, actually, and it lifts my spirits somewhat. To my surprise, I notice a luna high up in the sky. But again, I'm not sure why I'm surprised. The moon during daytime isn't that unusual, is it? I jump over the steps and walk onto the path leading towards the village. It's a good few hours after sunrise, so most wolves have already got up and went about their business, meaning the street isn't that crowded. In fact, there's hardly anyone here. My steps gain a cheerful gait, and I swing my bucket back and forth. It is a lovely morning. However, just before I reach Vithir's shop, I stop dead in my tracks, noticing Tano walking out from around the corner. Fuck. I look for a place to bolt into, but I'm sitting, but I'm a sitting duck here, and the wolf notices me just as fast as I notice him. Ugh, that's the last thing I need. <laughs> Fancy running into you here. Fancy? I just stepped out of Rannick's cottage, you twit. What are you up to? He asks nonchalantly as he approaches. I give him a dumbfounded look. I'm not going to dance to his tune again. A bucket? Hmm. Could it be you're looking for water? Oh no! I don't know! I don't want your help! I can show you the way. Although it's odd you're left unchaperoned. He looks around as if checking if someone had lost a pet. Once he's satisfied that I wasn't misplaced, he gives me a curious look. Out of nowhere, he reaches for me. Before I can swat him away, he takes hold of my chin and tilts my head, revealing the left side of my neck. What's this? He blinks and his expression shifts to that of genuine confusion. Fuck! You're bruised. I didn't know it was showing. After all, I don't have a mirror. Despite my fear, his expression doesn't shift to malice, but rather actual worry. Who did this to you? Rannick? His voice carries doubt. Or was it Vool? He asks with much clearer conviction. Don't tell me they did it while putting that collar on. What? I blink. I almost want to shout out no, but manage to rein myself in. That's when we both shudder in surprise as Kor's melodic call reaches us from inside of Vithir's house. Tano, cutie pie, I knew I heard your voice. Cora. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't seem to like her. The male nods to her casually. She comes to a stop and gives me a kind smile. Wait, what is she doing here? Oh, hello, pet. Where might the two of you be headed? Showing the kid where the spring's at. He shrugs, causing the female to look at him with slight disbelief. Kinda odd for you to do that. I thought Rannick left him in Vool's care. You would think that, wouldn't you? He gives me a telling look. So, what happened? You tell me. He looks a bit shaken up. The white wolf nods towards me and I shy away, trying to conceal my bruised neck. Yeah, he does seem a bit spooked. Thankfully, she does not inquire further and just puffs up her cheeks in anger. Oh, I knew it was a bad idea to leave the pup with that brute. Rannick does what Rannick wills, and it has always been so. Tano says dismissively, clearly somewhat bothered by her. I wish you guys would patch things up already. This little spat is going on for far too long. It's been nearly three years. You're barking at the wrong tree here, he mutters defiantly, and the sudden shift in the conversation grabs my attention. Oh, come off it, Tano. You're both equally to blame, the female replies sternly. You should swallow your damn pride and make up already, the both of you. It's such a shame seeing friendship like that just thrown away. Wait, Tano and Rannick were friends? Close, it would even seem. Maybe said friendship wasn't all that. If it was, if it was so easily tossed aside. Honey, you know I'd love you like a brother, but you can be such a little prick sometimes. Cora says with a caring voice, placing a paw on his shoulder, and I almost snort with laughter. I've known both of you since puphood. Rannick doesn't turn on others easily. I tried to set things right. Again, Tana protests with a slight growl. Perhaps you didn't try hard enough. You're the one to talk, both both acting like lovebirds. How convenient for him. So, he's in on it as well. I guess Vool is the last one to the party. Tano, you're behaving like friends were a commodity you have in an ample supply. Do not push me. Do not push it with me. Her attitude shifts slightly, and although her voice is still melodic, it carries more of a serious undertone. 
Tano also notices it and pulls his ears back in deference. Sorry, I just would rather we didn't talk about it. He gives me a reluctant glance. The wolf clearly doesn't want me to hear more than I should. Fine. The female sighs, rolling her eyes and then turning to face me. I try to make sure she doesn't notice my bruised throat, readjusting my position and tilting away from her. This does seem to be this does seem to trouble the female, but she does not read further into it. I guess she thinks she's making me uncomfortable. You better get him to that spring before the poor thing dies of thirst. She mumbles awkwardly. Yeah. The white wolf pushes me to the side, forcing me to move. As I begin to walk off, she calls out, Batano! I can see her toy with her fingers nervously. Know that I very much don't want to be forced to choose between you two. Not everything has to be a spitting contest. She almost sounds pleading. And for the love of Aluna, do not take out your frustration on this little one. Why would you think... It's beneath you, you hear me? The female interrupts, giving him a stern look. The Tano I know would not endanger others for amusement, nor to get back at someone. Reluctantly, I give the male a worried look. It seems not only Varissa has a somewhat good opinion of the male. He notices my gaze and quickly flushes with embarrassment. I'm <clears throat> just taking him to the spring. Glad to hear it. She nods with a smile, approaching me and ruffling my hair. See you later, pet. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to make of that exchange. However, I am grateful. Not only did I learn there's more to Tano's and Rynek's hostility, but also Kor effectively put an end to any potential schemes the white male cooked up for me. A at least for now. I'm still quite wary following him into the woods. He seems oddly defeated and his cocky, annoying attitude is completely gone. We walk in silence and as much as I was thinking of slipping away from him, curiosity takes over. I'm not a cat, after all. I sneak glances at his troubled expression, but he seems to pay me no mind, clearly buried in thought. We walk maybe five or ten minutes until I can hear the slushing of the nearby creek. We push on through a dense thicket and there it is. It looks enchanting. The white with, cr with crystal, clear, crystal clear water meandering between different rocks and pebbles covering the bottom of the brook. There's even a cataract every now and then, with cascading streams creating tiny rainbows twinkling over the misty spray. I almost gasp out of praise, but catch myself at the very last minute. Here you go. Renek's house is that way. He points and I take note of the direction. It almost sounds as if he was meaning to leave me here. I wouldn't mind to be fair, he's making me quite uncomfortable. I dunk the bucket into the stream, allowing it to fill up. Pulling it out is a bit of a chore and I struggle, and a struggle, but I manage. Tano gives me an inquisitive look, as if gauging if I'm going to get back home. I straighten up and try not to show how heavy the bucket really became. As I struggle to walk, the water sloshes from side to side, splattering every other step. Ugh, give it here. The male grumbles in annoyance. You'll spill half of it before you even get there. So much for leaving me alone, then. But not that I'm complaining, that bucket is pretty freaking heavy. The walk, we walk back towards the cottage again in complete silence. I guess Cora really got underneath his skin. Or perhaps, since he clearly knows I can understand them, he's just embarrassed I witnessed the exchange. But whatever the reason, it's quite amusing seeing him so flustered. Even he puts on a mask. In all fairness, smugness and overconfidence do not suit him. Renick pulls them off, but then again, my wolf isn't a dick about it. As we approach the cabin, my stomach, my stomach rumbles quite loudly and I wince in embarrassment once again. Jeez, before I could go on just... Before I could go on just the ni Before I could go on just the nibbles? Oh, geez, before I could go on just the nibbles, but now I'm getting ravenous all of a sudden. Do you have anything to eat? The wolf asks with feigned concern. At least I assume it's feigned. I don't trust his courtesy anymore. I just look dumbfounded into the scenery, ignoring him completely. Others told me to keep my distance, and now even Cora called him out on his shenanigans. It's a simple question. Are you hungry? I release a long, protracted sigh, looking at him with amusement. I know he suspects, but I'm not going to provide him with proof. Ugh! Come on! He walks towards the village and nods for me to follow. Since he's still carrying my water, I don't have much choice. We walk towards Vithyr's house again, and the male plops the bucket just outside the bakery. Cora, you still there? Just a moment! The female responds and takes a, takes a while to step out. She wipes her paws into a cloth, smiling wide as she notices the bucket. Wow, I'm impressed. Honesty becomes you. Her eyes turn towards me, but again I try to shy away to hide my bruise. Your father left any food around? Rolls or pies that he wouldn't miss? Wait, 
She's Vithir's kid? I had a feeling she looks a lot like him. The chief was right. That old wolf was pop that old that old wolf be popping them all over the damn place. <laughs> no, he hasn't come back since yesterday, probably drinking again at the villa. She rolls her eyes in annoyance. I guess those two party hard whenever they can. Well, why'd you ask? Well, the kid needs some food. Kid? I'm your age, you twerp! Oh, I can help with that. I was making quiches for the pups later. I could spare one or two. Alright! That's gonna be the end of this episode. It's cool to see uh, Tano and Korra, their little uh, whole back and forth. So, I mean, I don't think Tano is a bad guy. I just think he's a little, uh... Childish. Vol definitely is fucking childish. God, idiot. He's such an idiot. <laughs> but anyway, you guys say I am really far behind on this. That means I've got a lot of content to get through. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!